everyone, welcome back to Math Connects Wholesale, the 2023 edition. My, my name is Susie Menery. I'm the wholesale um, program lead for, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, the connectivity in uh, the mobile ecosystem forum. Uh, we are a bit late, I think, so I'm not going to spend too much time. We talked about um, uh, the uh, IoT uh, market landscape. I'd like to invite my colleague, uh, Nasia, who is also a MEF contributor and who is taking a bit of time from her holiday in Athens, I understand. So welcome. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> hey, Susie. Hello, everyone. I uh, hope I'm audible. Okay. Apologies for the glare. What can I say? It's very sunny in Athens and uh, ah, I'm yeah, enjoying okay. it quite a bit. <laughs> Thank you. Good, good, good. So we've heard from Andrew that 7.3% of the total IoT value is spent on connectivity. Obviously, this is a, a small fraction of the, the overall value of IoT. Mm -hmm. So obviously for any carrier who sits and has IoT on top of their agenda is what can we do beyond connectivity and actually monetize, um, monetize that IoT opportunity. So um, I, I, you know, I'm really happy to have you here because you are our IoT expert in this, uh, in, uh, at, at MEF. And uh, I'm sure you have great panelists to discuss that with us. And uh, I'd like to give you the floor, introduce your panelists, and take us through this this very uh, uh, exciting topic. Thank you, Susie. Thank you. And Thank like you, you said, uh, uh, before I uh, introduce uh, my wonderful panelists, we, what we're going to cover today, folks, hello again, this is Nasia, and uh, we're going to cover uh, not only connectivity, but we're going to go through con from connectivity all the way to monetization. As we saw on the previous session from Andrew, the connectivity section also, uh, from IoT, the IoT ecosystem is um, shy of 7%. And that's a big reduction year on year when the market share of IoT connectivity um, was to begin with around you know 15%. So we need to see what can we do in order to make IoT connectivity more efficient, and most importantly, how we can make money out of it. And without further ado, I would like to introduce you to my wonderful panel for this session. I have with me today uh, Nicholas Barre, uh, Managing Director and CEO of IoT from iBasis. Hi, Nicholas. How are you? Hi, Ines. Yeah, very well. From a sunny Paris as well. Maybe less than Excellent. <laughs> I'm <laughs> joining you today with the sun. So what I'm going to do is introduce the rest of the panel and then allow you gentlemen to introduce yourselves a little bit more of what you do within your organization. So next up, Jimmy Jones, uh, head of security from Zariot. Hi, hi, Jimmy. How are you? Hi, Nasia. Uh, yeah, very good. Very good. Thank you. Not sunny in London. Fun. Ah, is it sunny in London? See, I'm not there. <laughs> Just about. That's why. All right. And and last but not least, uh, Francisco Marocco, uh, otherwise known as Paco from National Instruments. Hello, Paco. How are you? Thank you, Nasia. Thank you for having me here. Um, I'm very good. If I want to compete in terms of sun in Madrid, I think that we are, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Let, let, let's just say, if this was a panel about sunshine, uh, we would have won. <laughs> yeah. So, gentlemen, thank you for joining me today. We have quite an interesting uh, panel and discussion uh, to cover, and especially since we're going to try to take our audience through a journey all the way from connectivity to monetization, you know, making some money out of this connectivity, not just connectivity, but everything in between. So, um, Nicholas, uh, why don't you, sir, introduce yourself a little bit, tell us about what you folks do at iBasis and within your department. And then if you can get starting us off um, with the main topic around connectivity, because you do a lot on connectivity. So we would like to know a little bit more about that. Yeah, so uh, thanks. So I'm Nicola. I'm, uh, I have a wholesale background. I've been, uh, let's say, in the carrier and rooming industry for, for more than 20 years. And uh, so I'm in charge of uh, the IoT business for, of iBusiness. And, you know, iBusiness is, let's say, is, uh, let's say, already in this business, uh, is in IoT business at the beginning without really being an IoT player, but coming back, coming from our mobile uh, data background. So because, let's say, at iBusiness, we are our main 
let's say our legacy business where voice and, and mobile uh, data so i'm talking about ip services so we were let's say already providing this um this uh, connectivity to 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 the iot industry by being a, 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 a nice peaks player and then after we decided so coming back from this background uh, we decided to have uh, to develop uh, our own uh, iot solution and let's say as we were one of the of the latest uh, comer we decided obviously to focus more on eSIM e technology and um, and also to let's say to play uh, with uh, with our with our background which is to be really part of the MNO ecosystem uh, with whom we have a, a relationship for more than 20 years on the voice uh, more than 15 on the mobile data and, and more more recently on both uh, uh, iot and, and messaging i think that um if i may just uh, on the on the on the iot business on the iot i think first of all the good the good news is that, that i would say that iot is back on track because after covid was there was a lot of project delay due to the lack of the shortage of chipset blah 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 and the complexity of the supply chain which was totally uh, misaligned and uh, and obviously, and also, also often, let's say the the IoT project where let's say slightly delay or where coming after the big uh, the big mainstream uh, products, obviously smart smartphones, but uh, but not only. And uh, so, first of all, I think today it's it's really positive because we we see that uh, everything is is working more or less uh, correctly. I think that let's not forget that. Um, uh, also today, a lot of IoT connectivity is uh, is still connected to fixed networks, so Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, whatever. Uh, but I think that today we are talking about mobile ecosystem, and uh, the good news is that we see uh, more and more, thanks to the expansion of let's say different technology, uh, we see uh, more and more uh, possibility and uh, a strong uh, traction uh, around also obviously more mobile connectivity both of, from, let's say, LP1 technologies, obviously uh, 4G as well, but more recently uh, 5G, uh, which also could be a, a, a game changer for, 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 for the IoT industry. And Fantastic. Well, th thank you, Nicola. Um, that's, uh, that's a nice overview there, both for iBasis and a little bit to get us started on the conversation around connectivity. Uh, Jimmy, I'm going to come next to you, sir, because uh, Zariot, you folks are also into connectivity, and not only you are uh, heavily into securing that connectivity for IoT. So why don't you uh, give us a couple lines about you, your role, and your, uh, what Zariot is doing around connectivity? for IoT specifically. Yeah, sure. So um, thanks, Nessia. My name's uh, Jimmy Jones. I'm the head of security at Zariot. And Zariot is a dedicated IoT cellular connectivity provider, an MVNO, uh, with a particular focus, as Nessia says, on security, but also open, opening up the uh, telecoms network to um, innovation. And our approach to IoT connectivity is um, security first. We, we believe that's, and that's our key go-to-market probably, uh, we believe that IoT will only be used and therefore successful if it's trusted. If it's not trusted, it's not going to be used. And it can only be trusted if it's secure. So it seems to be uh, a no-brainer uh, to make sure that security is there, to make sure we get the, the pickup and we, we get the uh, success we all imagine is there. Um, we see we see um, connectivity as, as, as an integral part of the overall solution. So I think IoT can be boiled down to, to three elements. You have the device, the network, and the application. And the network has always been the least open, especially in cellular, actually, because you can get near enough any device built and you can get any application made. But to have a cohesive solution, to have a secure by design, to, to use that, line uh, you need to make the network part of the overall solution and that's what we're looking to do we're looking to make sure that we can open the core network for visibility for, for other elements that we have in our network as well that we own but mainly what we need to do is make tangible benefits too long telecoms has been a solution looking for a problem we want to actually make it an integral part of the overall design and we can do that with the, the network and the new sim functionality we think that's very valuable and we think 
that actually if we can bring security as part of the connectivity offering and then we can also add a add some innovation then we can create some balance as well because whenever you go to every company you'll agree to me there's uh, there's the security guy asking for budget and there's the business guy asking for budget if we can bring cont uh, continuity and actually a cohesive solution across the whole DNA, the device, the network, and the application, then hopefully we can address both of them. Thanks, Jimmy. Um, I mean, uh, no, no surprise there for me, but it will be wonderful. It's wonderful for our, uh, our audience to to get a different flavor as well. I'm coming to you, Paco, next, because you're coming from a different angle altogether. You're coming from the consulting and analyst side of things, and you've been around for a long time, and you've been wave making waves within the industry when it comes to IoT from the early days. So what I would be interesting is, after your short introduction is can you you know give us a, a, a feel of where you you think um iot connectivity stands at the moment okay uh, thank you nasia so like you said i've been working in iot for many years i think before we call iot i call well i don't know many many years and just for a short introduction about myself so when i was working in the telecom industry for more than 20 years I was working in both sides of the table. I was working in the telecom operators like Vodafone, Telefonica and others. And I was also working in the other side when it's vendor sites, you no, know, like Microsoft, Oracle, and those. So I really know what are the gaps in one side and the other. The idea when I leave Microsoft to create my own company and focalize in, in IoT, like you said, consulting, uh, advising companies, etc. My main focus was to continue helping the, the telco operators. The telco operators at that time was basically end-to-end -end operators. So they really sell, you know, SIMs and they really sell connectivity for a few customers at a high price. And they was happy. What happened is that suddenly there were some companies. I think there was like a first thing is that telcos was, you know, freezing their revenues in other areas you know the voice the data there was you know growing at the at the same speed that previous years and they need to find a new revenue share a new revenue mechanism and analysts companies like Cisco, IEC, Garner all the companies in a similar times they all decide oh you know the new time is for IoT there will be billion of devices very quickly, there will be massive uh, implementation of IoT, and your revenue in IoT will be maybe reach 10% or 50%. So nobody take care about you know how cost it will be to reach this 10 million and what will be the competency. So my intention when I leave the the company say you know telcos guys you need to first think in a business plan in a you know in a realistic business plan because everything that you have seen in the past is that if there is a big business, then there will be more competitors, also competitors that we see later on. Of course, you cannot imagine that the, the cellular will not have competitors in terms of the technology. There was, you know, some companies like Cisfor or the, the LP1, the Lores, Alliance. There was many comp uh, companies that was you know, looking for niche segments. And what I see is in the, the telcos, don't understand very well what they need to do because they feel like, you know, hey, you know, the customer will come to us. Every people is telling that it's like a miracle. They will get a lot of benefits with trillions of, of uh, benefits in different, uh, you know, segments. Etc. So I feel like there was not from the beginning in all the telcos an initial strategy to see, hey, where we need to focus. And this is some problem that they see because they, during the, the next years, they found that, they, you know, the competitors can be MBNOs or can be other companies that they are entering into this market. And like, you know, Richard said, there are not only cellular, there are other connectivity protocols and, and other connectivity uh, technologies that make more easy, simple, or cost-effective the implementation of IoT. So in all the enthusiasm that the, you know, telco operator has at the beginning of the, let's say, 20, 2020, 2020, 20 this, uh, you know, for 10 years ago, they, you know, all this was disappearance. And then they found that where we can find the, 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 the money in this area. So some people start, you know, 
beating for smart cities, so another one for smart industry. So it was like, you know, uh, it's a duck without the head. And right now I feel like, you know, the all the companies now exactly what is IoT. I, I, I understand that for instance, you know, in every period you will have some problems, sometimes because the COVID or other or a war or whatever. So you need to think that the, the world now is complex, the competitors are complex, and you need to create a business plan, you need to define KPI, and you need to create a team. A really a team may be separate from the rest of the operation, and you need to provide empower this team to create a real business in IoT. And this is some of the fails that I found in many companies. Sometimes they was, you know, following others, and sometimes because the revenue was not as they expected, they was, you know, removing some resources and budget for, for this. And mm -hmm, this is mm -hmm. the problem that they have not reached the, the strategy. And um, just only I mean, to finalize, uh, just to finalize, sorry, in my, well, I continue just like an independent consultant in, in IoT, but when, after the COVID, I also suffered this and I have to hold my, my company and I join NI, that is a national instrument, it's a company that focuses in test instrumentation. But also this company, we are in the process of a digital transformation and the company acquires some IoT or industrial IoT platform. So mm -hmm. right now, in, what I see is now the vision of other industries, not only the telco, like aerospace, like uh, uh, transportation, is that how they are using IoT and other technologies just uh, to, to change the business model and to monetize and to be more competitive. So I have now the, the, the vision of not only the telco, but other industries. Well, that's good. Thank you. Thank you, Paco. And, and um, I, I know that um, on the next few minutes, we're going to try to unpack quite a few things and I'm going to try to move you through, um, I would say, the journey maybe a little bit faster than we would like to, but let, let's take with it. Uh, still with connectivity, um, and Nicholas, um, 5G obviously is going to play a big role and you mentioned 5G earlier on, on in, in your introduction. Um, do you... What, what is the demand that you're seeing when it comes um, to 5G and what do organizations need to do in order to get prepared for this? I think, yes. So, uh, first of all, I think that uh, 5G is not uh, not the, the same level of maturity in different uh, regions. Uh, I think it's important. While I would say that 4G is more or less similar, it's not the case of, uh, of, of 5G. And uh, let's say as we operate in uh, in US, and actually we were... Um, the first one uh, to, to, to onboard a, a domestic uh, profile, we, we are, let's say, uh, we, we, we have the, the ability to, to see the, the fact that today 5G, especially in the US, is a big, big success, uh, but we are talking about fixed wireless access. Okay, definitely this, this is a big thing. And uh, well, let's say, I'm not sure that we can call that IoT, even let's say if it's let's say it's more data only, but it's really a replacement of, of 5G. And I think that for many MNOs, uh, today 5G is successful. It's still, let's say, not a real mobile uh, solution. It's still, let's say, a replacement of, uh, of, uh, of fixed networks because the, it's, you, you enjoy a, a much better uh, quality of service than, uh, than let's say, legacy uh, fixed uh, technology. And on top of it, you can remove and uh, remove all the complexity, obviously, of of huge deployments. And obviously, on territories such as US or even I'm thinking about the the Nordic country, where you have a lot of uh, land but few inhabitants, it makes sense to 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 go to mobile. So today we see that uh, we can enjoy uh, and it's su it's extremely successful. And I think that what is obviously the 5G is today we have uh, sorry to be a bit let's say. To technical, we, we are not really enjoying most of the time the full 5G because we are still on NSA for non standard So basically, you have a, a local radio access which is 5G, but let's say the road between mm -hmm. uh, the network is still, uh, let's say, in the in, in 4G or, or let's say other technologies. Uh, and I think that what 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 we see is that we we see many uh, use cases which were not possible on let's say other technology on mobile technology are becoming possible. Obviously, we are talking about the edge computing and so on, which is also, also a, a mix of it. But uh, we see that uh, 
I think that we can see about the parallel. Uh, at the beginning, if we go back to fixed network, it was uh, with DSL network, we were wondering, okay, I have 500K. Oh, it's far too much. What I'm going to do with such capacity? Usually we see that uh, if we give access and if we give a lot of capacity to, to, to the end users or to, to the application, uh, new solutions are coming. Uh, so definitely we see that uh, and 5G is also brings, let's say, extra security and so on. But I, I'm sure that Francisco will be uh, better positioned than myself to, or, or to me to, to explain those details. Uh, but there are plenty of advantages. And I think that I would just say, OK, we should at least uh, reconsider all the use cases and see also and think bigger with 5G. There are many uses, let's say, unleash all the, 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 the features that you, you want, which are a bit complex with, uh, with 4G and become possible on 5G. And I think just to, to come back on one of your previous questions in terms of monetization, in terms of value also of the, of the, of the connectivity part, it will come also only also with quality of service. And I mm -hmm. think that's also what we observe. And if you offer a good quality of service, then after people are ready to pay a little more for for for, for the connectivity because uh, the the benefit of iot is big and obviously to rely to be able to rely on something which is 100 percent reliable or close to 100 percent it makes a it makes a big difference mm -hmm. Of course, uh, you know, connectivity being just one element on the IoT ecosystem, but nevertheless, you know, without connectivity, uh, we all know there is no such thing as IoT. And then we have the different types of connectivity. Um, within the telco community, we like to talk more about mobile connectivity, including all the Gs. Uh, in the UK recently, we had the sunsetting or the announcement of the sunsetting of 2G and 3G, which will affect the overall connectivity. Um, recently, one one of my favorite things is the Leo satellite and how can you bring that connectivity down to um, the device itself. It's quite fascinating. However, there is a lot of challenges when it comes to uh, wholesale connectivity. And I'm going to come to you, Jimmy, because what I'm looking here to do is have a discussion around not only the challenges, but also if we can bridge it into the security from the challenges. The security of the challenges um yeah yeah i mean there, there's a the connectivity is is key there's no you're, you're right there's no um there's no no such thing as iot if there's not connectivity um and the challenges are there that i mean the complexity is rising exponentially so there's no company in any field that can deliver everything anymore so we're all going to have to be involved we're all going to have to start uh, creating uh, and, and being involved in the overall solution. And that complexity is only going to grow because at the moment, most of the things we, most IoT uh, is just watching us and recording information when we move to operational technology, then it monitors and then does something about it. So the complexity of protecting it and the physical impact if breached is, is massively increased. Um, I think the opportunity there and the way to monetize that is if we do work together, we can, we can deliver things a lot more agilely to market we, we've started to work in fact our whole go-to-market really at the moment is a partner um, ecosystem so we're looking to as i said earlier open up the, the cellular and and the sim in particularly because we have skills around um building out particular profiles specifically for iot use cases and and bringing in extra functionality that way um, we think that by doing that we can deliver um, functionality and then monetize a lot quicker because we all know that the go-to-market variety is, is really long. It's uh, it makes it makes even the glacial pace of uh, telecoms look look quick at times. Um, but if we can do that, if we can actually start to do what we do best, which is connectivity, and open that up a little bit, because if you think about the DNA of a uh, of a of IoT. Net, network is 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 right in the middle if we can bleed out and start to give some of the functionality that we hide for our own internal use to the device or the application some of the visibility we get for quality of service exactly as um exactly was just was mentioned by nicholas um then i think we can actually 
bring tangible benefits to people. And, that, and that's that's what we're looking to do. We're looking to uh, bring that uh, much quicker and, and the way it, bringing in, uh, to Paco's point, bringing in expertise from other areas really helps because those partners not only have expertise we don't have uh, around encryption or blockchain or whatever one, whichever partner I choose, um, they also have a different view. And we have the, I've worked in telecoms for 25 years. I've got the telecoms blinkers. I'm never going to be able to take them off. They're, they're just there for good. But what I do accept is other people can see the other opportunities. And when they explain to us what they actually need, we can deliver them because there's so much functionality on Telco that we just describe badly or, or we don't tell anybody about. If we can open that up, then we can become an enabler. If we become an enabler, then we can more quickly monetize it in maybe more on the niche side uh than mm -hmm. the volume side as the previous um presentation spoke about but I, I think that's where we where we need to be and i think that will help us with our end customer base we all have to be working to that end customer base's goals rather than our own and that means collaboration like you said between different connectivity between LoRaWAN and cellular and wi-fi and and different expertise around that and i think we're only mm -hmm. at the very beginning of that but um i think it's the only way forward yeah, so, so Jimmy, um, with all this uh, increased complexity, right, um, uh, you and I in particular, we've been having many discussions around security, uh, you know, pretty much every time we have a conversation. And uh, how, do we, how do we secure our ecosystem? You know, uh, you've done a lot of work in securing the SIM itself. Right, and now you're uh, the things that you guys are doing at at Sariot is just like working with partnerships to expand the ecosystem. But how can we keep the security infrastructure agile enough and robust enough that it would allow us to actually secure not only by design but secure end to end our IoT ecosystem? You, you've answered the question. So what, what we've done there by by making the network part of the overall design, you can be secure by design. And, that, and that's that's the beauty of an ecosystem and when you work together. If you can create a situation where the network can help uh, secure the keys, for instance, on the SIM or add tokens to the SIM to help attestation mm -hmm. for blockchain, because mm -hmm. blockchain is usually, usually secure, but only after it's been written. Um, if you can bring, if the if the network becomes an enabler to that end, or gives visibility to the application, or allows APIs using things like GSMA's um, open gateway, things like that, if we can if we can create solutions like that, then every all the working parts are working, are, are working together, mm -hmm. and you have a, a cohesive solution. Because the problem you have with security is, is always on the edge. If, you've, if you're splitting your solution between the devices here, here's the hard edges. If the um, network's here, here's the hard edges, application here, then all of those edges become a problem. And, and everybody's starting to recognize that that, that, is, that something needs to be done. So we've got legislation in the EU, so um, Article 3.3 of uh, the Radio Equipment Directive, that comes into force next year. The UK's got its PSTI bill um, mm -hmm. in April. So legislation is there but i think on the flip side of that there is a bet there just as paco said earlier there, there's been a change mm -hmm. of um a change of mentality so people are actually making buying decisions on security as well so it's, it's worth working together and that's because they know that if they, if they trust something they'll use it and I, it all comes down to trust i think and that's why i like what the us are doing then they've not legislated against uh sorry, legislated for security, they've, they've introduced the cyber security mark. So what they're doing is they're creating a carrot mm -hmm. rather than a stick. So they're piggybacking on that change of um, attitude to the public, and they're making it easier for them to make a choice by putting a stamp on, on the device, a mm -hmm. shield, uh, so they can make that decision. So I, I think it would, yeah, it comes down to a collaboration yeah and this is a good point to bring you in paco and let's uh um talk a little bit about data so if we can um you you've also been vocal about uh, iot and 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 all the goods and the bad and the ugly what happened through the years on iot and now we have a new um 
uh, let's say, a kid on the block called AI, artificial intelligence, who is uh, sort of like stealing the, the spotlight from the other buzzword that has been there for years, IoT. But uh, all that aside, uh, we need data. Oh, IoT without just, you know, just the connectivity, the whole thing, the whole reason we're doing all this is to collect the data. Without the data, you know, the, the rest is just superficial connection. So uh, in your opinion, Paco, um, how uh, IoT analytics, especially if we're going to incorporate AI, what role will it play in the whole IoT ecosystem? And uh, what are the key things we should be looking at? Yeah. Uh, okay, well, let me start, you know, complementing the Jimmy answer. So in reality, when I see the mobile operators or MVNOs is that they try to sell connectivity and upgrade this connectivity with security and other characteristics. But the reality is that I feel they need to think more in what are my end customer? And because in spite that we try, and I'm just thinking in one company that I launched many years ago for a smart home and for the, so if I think in why companies, not only in IoT, in any kind of aspect, why companies are not paying more for security. It's strange because, you know, it's security is everything that we recognize. But for instance, in my home, I have some security, but not full security because I am not able to pay this amount. So in other words, what I want to say is security is important, but it's also important to say who is going to pay more for this additional security. So if the network are intelligent, if the service is good, if you serve to the customer for every customer in the way that they are expecting, then you will be able to, you know, to, to monetize for different uh, for different segment for different customer different security. But you need to offer the same thing with connectivity. You cannot go to a customer and say, "Hey, there are hundreds of use cases. I can only cover this, this, and this because I am not managing Lura. My platform is not able." Or you fail in the billing. So the the quality of the service is something that also Nicolas said is very important in order just to to make sure that every people want to pay for a service related with IoT. It's, for me, is the IoT as a service is what we need to achieve. In terms of the data, is again, is the data for not only this year or last year, when, you know, when the decline of the connectivity, et cetera, most of the companies, most of the telcos was looking for the data. Hey, we have a lot of data, so we can monetize this data. And I remember, remember when I was, you know, talking with some operators, they say, okay, for instance, if you go to a stadium, to the, you know, soccer match or whatever, then you can have information. You don't really need to, you know, to all the information from this, but you know that there are around the stadium, and then you can use this, our platform, to monetize our data, and then you can recommend some things. The same thing for retail, etc. So there was many, many aspects in which a, the owner of the data is a, person, is, is a company, uh, you know, that can, you know, leverage the information mm -hmm. and to provide value to others. For many years, I think that the telcos was expecting that this, you know, revenue from the data was also growing the revenues in IoT. But the reality is that maybe because the, the laws in the European Union, maybe because other reasons, the, the, the fact is that they have not been able to, to monetize as they were expecting. So now they are looking for artificial intelligence. In fact, is you know, it's analytics. I was right now telling more analytics rather mm -hmm. than artificial intelligence because artificial intelligence. I don't think that there are many use cases for artificial intelligence in the world, to be honest. In spite of the ChatGPT or whatever, so I think that is very, you know, I think in the infants of artificial intelligence. However, the analytics is important, and they can offer this analytics for in my mind is like um, as a service model. So if you have as a service model, you are in the middle because you have, okay, the connectivity can be a kind of um, commodity, but you also have the security. If you have also mm -hmm. the service, if you have the analytics platform, then you can allow to a provider, for instance, in smart ways, smart ways or smart lighting, etc. You can offer everything that this company needs to manage the data and merge your data as a telco operator with the data that they have from the customer, et cetera, and provide additional services. So I believe that this is something that is not exploited as I was expecting in the last 
three, four years. So the data mm -hmm. is like every people is, I want to, you know, to collect all the data. For instance, when I was now talking with many companies in, in, in other industries, oh, we want to collect with this computing, we want to collect real time data. And then, because they don't think in why I need this data, what I do have to do with this data. I don't have the resources internally to take advantage of this data. It's like the cost of the <laughs> store, the data, and you know, the, the collection, the is too much and the benefit is not. So I am afraid that if we don't consider oh. this as, as a challenge, we will have the same problem with AI or the AIoT. Is that they fail because the expectation is so high that then the company said, okay, I have the data, but I don't get the value for, for this data. Okay, that, yeah. I mean, uh, quite frankly, when it comes to data, um, I mean, AI and everything, AI can only use what we feed it, whatever data we feed it. So if we feed it crop data, mm -hmm. we're going to get equally something like that back. But um, I'm going to stay with the uh, direction, uh, Paco, you've started talking about monetizing the data and business models, uh, because that's very key when it comes to monetization. What are the most effective business models that we've seen gentlemen happening at the moment within the IoT ecosystem? And I'm going to come to you for some Nicola, um, uh, from, from your engagement with your customers, what kind of business models do you see? And also, more, most importantly, what would you advise when somebody is looking to, um, to get into IoT? So I think the business model, which are, are let's say, the more, becoming more and more successful is a kind of one-stop shopping. Okay, just to say, okay, I'm providing the device and the connectivity and Mm -hmm. And to be more focused on the the, the, six, the ones who are really successful is to say, okay, I'm bringing you service. Uh, it can be, uh, let's say, very different, let's say, it can be security, it can be uh, ubiquity, it can be plenty of different things, uh, depending on the, on the geographies. But what we see is to, 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 to think about, let's say, to, to be focused not on the connectivity part, because this is just a mean, but just to be focused on, on the on the usage and on the real benefit of, of IoT for, 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 for the end user. And that's where we say, okay, we see a few IoT SPs who are extremely successful because they need to be focused. And I think that mm -hmm. also to be successful as you are, let's say IoT is a complex industry, I think the focus is 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 critical. And just to 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 come back on on uh, on five AI on on, uh, on uh, AI, I think that also AI can help us also uh, sometimes to uh, to make the difference. And for instance, when I was referring to quality of service, the issue is how do you really monitor this quality of service? Because uh, telecom networks are complex between different technologies, different networks. Obviously, when you are adding the mobility part, it's creating extra complexity. And I think that also some uh, some uh, some value and how to monetize will be maybe in a better routing always uh, always focus on quality of service because if you think about it the benefit or let's say the consequences of of an outage or, or let's say a lack of of availability of any network or or, or too, too small speed is huge okay mm -hmm. and i think that's Many, many players do not realize uh, what does it mean maybe to optimize slightly on the cost just to gain, maybe they are going to gain three, four, five percent, but they lose much more. And I think that's, uh, I think the, the, the value, the monetization will be really to, to, uh, to have a global solution and to be focused on, on, on the, the benefit uh, for the end users and to ensemble everything. As Jimmy said, okay, uh, uh, security is key. So to mm -hmm. not negligate also all those aspects, because if you, if you, well, let's say, if you are too focused on on a very specific part, you forget about the global value and the global added value of of the IoT. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I. Um... I fully agree with you that uh, a lot of what it comes to monetizing IoT and where a lot of the value is at the moment is uh, what I used to call a few years back um, hand-holding for the customer, which is end-to-end -end support, irrespective if it's edge devices or is it connectivity or is it analytics and so on and so forth. And that's what I've also been seeing a lot of the value and the biggest market share and uh, what we're trying to monetize uh, IoT. So, uh, Jimmy, um, 
how do we measure our uh, return on investment ROI in, in IoT projects? I think that would be a nice, you know, question to sort of close us off as we move into the top of our session. Okay, because I did have a. Can I pop back to that monetizing? Yeah, of course, you can. Because if you keep it I, short, I that, that is. Yeah, I'll keep it short. It's. Um, I'm going to try and do a bit of evangelism, which is not like me, but um, I think there is a there is a there is a value in the data, uh, and I think moving forward, data is, is is quite strange because if you imagine, it's called the new new gold isn't it but um gold is based on scarcity the more scarce it is the, the more valuable it is data is the other way around the more data you have uh, the more valuable it is and, and that's going to grow with uh iot as long as we move away from messy uncertain data to validated controlled data and high quality data then i, I think actually we can we can do that and, and that's basically the basis of um internet three dot zero if you what what we already do is we can put the keys in the hands of the IoT device owner, which gives them control. Um, and if you imagine we've got three or four devices collecting data for us for the, from us at the moment, in the future we'll have 10 or more. And statistics say we'll, we'll be interacting with IoT every 18 seconds moving forward. But if we can, if we now have the data, we can monetize that for ourselves and we can create a circular economy because when the data comes from us that we could potentially get paid for because we own it, the enterprise has validated data it can then and it's got our permission because we own the keys we've, we've given them permission to use it they can then market that as as um more effectively because they can say uh, this is the people with um this is our audience this is how much data we've got etc cetera, etc cetera. so they can sell that for more the end the marketeers can market to us more accurately because it's validated data so actually if we use ai and we use the data we're collecting maybe a little bit more efficiently and in a different way and we're not all siloed well it's not all siloed in in um in, in, in huge cloud environments being bought by apis but actually shared around i think there could be an option that monetize you could monetize the whole of iot really well so that's a step forward i'll give you that's not today but um, I think if we put the keys in the network and internet 3.0 happens, I think that's how you monetize IoT. Fantastic. And with that, we are uh, on the top of the hour. And funny enough, where I'm at is 15.15, which is two hours ahead of London, which is a nice number to, to finish our session. Um, uh, gentlemen, I, would, I don't know if we have any questions uh, from the audience, but I would like to thank you very much for taking the time to join me today uh, this is a big discussion so obviously we just scratched the surface and we covered a few things but i hope we've given some value to our audience to see you know from uh, the connectivity side of things all the way to the data to a little bit of a security and how you can make money in the end of the day of uh, with iot because that's what we're doing this uh not only you know to everything will be connected let's assume that's going to happen that discussion is that everything will be connected so now let's concentrate on how do we make money with all this connectivity and like connectivity i don't just make the physical connectivity or mobile connectivity i'm talking about the data the information and how we create value and the value is not just only monetary money is value that can enhance lives it can enhance our work and everything else in between so with that gentlemen thank you so much nicola paco mm -hmm. jimmy you've been wonderful thank you gentlemen have thank a you. great rest have of the day. day thank you Bye.